Well, hello, my soul friends. It's Victoria on the Soul Nurturer channel. So what am I doing with the mask on? You might be thinking, well, yes, it's the time of the year where we put on costumes and we put on masks, but astrologically, it's time to remove our masks and show our raw and real selves. So <laughs> welcome to the Soul Nurture channel. I am going to be talking about the new moon in Scorpio, welcoming you all to Scorpio season, celebrating my Scorpio soul sisters and brothers out there. I am a Scorpio. November 7th is my birthday. So if you're just kind of, you know, scanning uh, possible videos to watch or what, what's the word, trolling, and you landed on my video, stay with me for a little bit celebrate my birthday with me, celebrate Scorpio season, and hopefully I will offer something for you that speaks directly to you and supports you on your uh, transformational journey. And it is the season. It is my favorite season, transformational. It's all about transformation, rebirthing, reclaiming, reclaiming our power, oh, all kinds of things. So I have a um, a bit to share, a lot to share, but I'm going to try to keep it condensed um, because I, I know your time is precious and I'm so grateful for you stopping by to share a little bit of your time with me. And uh, so welcome, welcome, welcome. It. If it's your first time, do you consider subscribing? Watch some of my other videos if they speak to you. Uh, yeah, subscribe and stick around and um, happy you're here. Thank you. And really the intention of this uh, channel is... Um, I'm a transformational hypnotherapist, a soul guide, all many, many, many credentials, but mostly my intention is to help all of us as souls having a human experience to reclaim our potential, our purpose, and with this new moon in Scorpio, our power. Who's with me? Okay, if it is your birthday season, Scorpios, comment below. Let me know when your birthday is. I wanna wish you a personal happy new year. And also, uh, let me know where all of you are viewing from. And since it's my birthday season, <laughs> consider a comment as a gift to me. And I hope that you find this gift uh, or this video as a gift to you. All right. Okay, here we go. So what does it mean for you? What does it mean when you think about being in your personal power? Or how about I'm going to just start with a few questions. What is it? What are you passionate about? but you're not bringing it forward into the world. How about where are you playing small, hiding, not letting your real and raw and wild self be seen? Hmm? Anybody? Well, I feel like this new moon in Scorpio and through Scorpio season, and I'm going to talk about the archetypal expression of Scorpio, and I'm going to talk about the themes, the possibilities. Remember, I'm an intuitive astrologer. It's my feeling about this, the potential, but you are the expert of you, and only take what resonates with you and leave the rest, okay? All right, so first of all, you know, it's a, it's a season of shedding. So yesterday I had shed a lot of hair. I don't know if you can even tell, but I, my hair grows so fast, it's so thick, and I had my very dear friend worked on my hair, and she just, she <laughs> shed a lot of my hair, and it's just feeling so light and so wonderful, and I share that with you only because that is the point. That is one of the um, invitations with this new moon in Scorpio. To feel the heaviness of the world, to feel, to, to dive into the shadows of your inner world and to shed and clear and rise up lighter and stronger and more powerful to bring your potential and your purpose. So, so I did a little shedding yesterday <laughs> and it really is a time for all of us to shed and to purge and to clear and to remove what's in the way of our authentic path. Okay. So when is this new moon happening? You may be asking. It is on um, November 1st, which is awesome because new moons are about new beginnings, right? And a time where we have an opportunity to think about where are we at and where do we want to be? And we set intentions and we 
tune into our soul desires, and then we start creating goals and a plan of action. Well, a few days after the new moon is when we go into action, but to move towards what our soul is calling to us that is still possible, right? So this new moon is happening on November 1st, which one is a new beginning. It's on the first of the month, new beginning, and it's one, it's 11, one, right? Um, if you're into angel numbers, what does one eleven mean to you? I know a lot of you follow like eleven eleven, you know, four, 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 but one, one, one has significance too. So what does it symbolize for you? Let me know. Okay. So it's happening at 5 47 AM Pacific time, but adjust accordingly to wherever you live in the world. And again, let me know where you live in the world. It is at nine degrees and 35 minutes. Um, and this is where, you know, I'm going to be talking about the possibilities in general, right? But you would want to look at your natal chart at where nine degrees and 35 minutes of Scorpio falls in your chart. Which, which house is that? And that's the house and the, um, theme of that house that you're being called to a new beginning but first we must engage in the the scorpionic possibilities or it's like so lunation cycles are like this and i i just cover new moon and full moon but every day we have transits the astrological weather and the planets as they're moving through the celestial sky are in relationship to each other and they, we call those aspects. And the aspects create um, the soul work. <laughs> That's it. What we're being called to do to evolve our soul, to emerge our soul, and to really fulfill the potential that Creator, God, universe, however you connect, created you for this time for you to bring into the world. So I'm going to talk more about that in just a moment. I'm a little concerned my audio is not working because I had an earbud in and I just took it off. So I hope it's, it's working. <laughs> okay. Truth be told, I did a video the other day. It was 40 minutes and it didn't feel authentic. It didn't feel real. I talked to a good friend of mine and she looked at it and she said, not your best work. And so I said, I'm going to do it over. I'm not going to settle for less than I can offer. And again, everything I'm speaking to is the potential of this new moon. So I want you to hear and let me know when something I say lands for you. Okay. So here are the possible, um, things. Well, before I get to that, I want to say, you know, the, the new moon, um, the lunation cycle, we call it is just an opportunity as I touched on new moons are like to pause say where are you where do you want to be full moons are about what's showing up that's not aligned with where I want to go what do I need to release and clear so yeah new moons are all about potential and our soul desires and each cycle holds possibilities for transforming evolving connecting to our soul desires but this new moon in Scorpio Scorpio season, it always invites us to a deeper, deeper dive, a deeper, deeper reclaiming, a rebirthing, all the words of Scorpio, rebirthing, um, transformation, tra um, alchemizing, you know, it's, it's to get so real. Again, we take the masks off and we take a real look, a deeper look, right? So it, this new moon, because it's in Scorpio, can feel a little more intense um, because there's sort of an urgency. Have you noticed with all the intensity in, in the world and all of the chaos, which is really another way of saying the birthing pains or the rebirthing pains that is pushing us forward to something new, right? And so we are the microcosms of the macrocosm we feel into what's happening in the external world. And then we do our inner work, our soul work to, to do this transformational dance as we do, as we breathe through and breath work is really important right now. In fact, years ago, when we first started hitting these huge transformational cycles, I, uh, I gathered some of my, my friends who had 
birth babies into the world and we did a little video I think I have it on this bit on this YouTube channel I'm not sure and if not I'll find it and post it it's um, you know just my my sense of humor and my awareness saying you know you hear people say during intense times or transformational times we need to practice deep breathing well I said no 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 we need to practice the birthing breath you know when you're birthing it's a whole di deeper deeper in the core of your body breathing and pushing and you know so um it's this new moon is is inviting us to potential the potentials over here but we have to push ourselves we have to go into the depths of our being to resurface with, with our gifts our treasures our hidden treasures and breathe so deeply you know like you know <laughs> the birthing breath what is it <laughs> you know or or moaning into it pushing you know just really just bearing down to to move with the intense birthing pains the growing pains so that we can get to something beyond what we've been in right okay so themes of this new moon that I feel this is just what I came to me you know most of all we need to activate our inner warrior for this transformational time and to fight for our potential and to fight for our values to fight for the vision we hold for ourselves our friends our families and for the world we share okay so also we need to learn to surrender or practice surrendering to the great mystery think about and when I work with women and, and and you know they're in a transformational cycle and I say do you have kids yes do you remember that moment when you were birthing that you had to completely surrender and trust there was nothing more you could do right it's kind of like you know in the US we're going through a pretty chaotic election and some of us you know <laughs> we're concerned and we if you've done all all you can do you know like I've been a little <laughs> obsessive obsessive is the Scorpio word uh, with my Instagram post trying to trying to show people what I see and at this point now seven days away from the election as I'm recording this I just need to surrender now and all I can do is pray and trust God that's what I mean by surrender to the great mystery of transformation if you're in the midst of your own personal transformation and it feels dark and it feels chaotic and you do not see how it's gonna work out you feel like you're in a dark night of the soul this is where you surrender I mean literally put your hands up and say I surrender all and I trust that the highest good is unfolding okay so that's the potential too um, also we may be we're working to emerge from you know what the the darkness emerge from the deep recesses of our psyche of our being things we've hidden denied suppressed so we can rise with our personal power it's really definitely about personal reclaiming that personal power high uh, rising to higher um, possibilities and this is kind of redundant but finding what gifts are in the shadow to bring forward for the collective our unique gifts right it's about learning to be a midwife of your own soul potential through your rebirthing cycle whatever that looks like for you again whatever house this new moon is happening in that's really where it's going to be a little bit more specific but I'm talking generally so everyone right now has been called to activate their gifts to take the mask off and say this is me perfectly imperfect raw and real living a life my my lived experience my wisdom that comes from the lived experience my gifts and I may not be perfect just as the candidates are not perfect but you know we can't expect people to be perfect because we're not perfect but still we rise with our potential with our gifts right so being a midwife for your own rebirthing for your own potential gathering harvesting your gifts claiming your own self-worth is really connected to this new moon right um, 
But I also feel it's about digesting old grief so we can grow and flow with new beginnings. We don't want to carry, like, um, this is definitely about shadow work. And Robert, Robert Bly talked about shadow work. It's like carrying a big bag of all of our unprocessed stuff, our hidden our hidden potential, and dragging it around us. Well, digesting our old grief or trauma allows us to reclaim the gifts and bring them front and center in our lives, no longer dragging all the hard stuff behind us, but alchemizing it into our gifts, right? Okay, so it's like the phoenix rising out of the ashes. That's the kind of feeling of this new moon as well. Um, wanted to say we may be feeling, you may be feeling, are you? Let me know. More anger, more triggers, more pressure. We have um, Mars opposite Pluto. And this is, we're not, it's not exact until November 3rd, but we're going to have a series of three in a row. Um, it's November 3rd, January, and then in April. And so there's pressure, pressure building. That's like birthing, right? Pressure. You just want to push. You want to be done. You want to get through it, but you just got to keep breathing and trusting and hold the vision of what's coming, right? The possibilities of that new birth, that new beginning, that new vision that we can't quite see yet. You know, when mamas birth their babies, you, you don't see the baby, but you know the baby's coming and you know the baby holds such potential and purpose. And it is the same when we're kind of going through these huge transformational cycles. We don't know what's on the other side of it. We're through the dark tunnel, but soon there will be light. And on the other side of it, as you hold the vision and you cultivate what's needed inside of you as your contribution for the world, it's, um, it's a beautiful thing. That's really what I'm about anyway. So, okay, we're needing to um, dive into the deep murky waters of our shadow to um, address the wounds, the suppressed energy that needs to be healed in order to reclaim that power as well. And I'll talk a little bit if I have time about the specifics, but I'm talking like th these are the aspects. These are the, the story, the, the planets in relationship show up as our transformational team and are supporting us and doing our work, right? I always say, you know, astrology, which is a symbolic language, when we learn the language and we learn to work with it instead of being worked by it, then we're contributing, right? I think it's also interesting that this new moon falls on the Day of the Dead or uh, El Dia de Muertos. It's a Mexican holidays holiday where families welcome back the souls of their deceased relatives. They have a reunion. They offer food and drink and favorite songs. And it's like they get to connect and reclaim the connection with the their loved ones, those souls that have gone into the spirit realm, right? But I think it's this new moon is like that too. It's an opportunity to reclaim parts of our soul that we have denied or lost through trauma or a hard relationship or where we were disempowered. And it's time to call back all of us, our soul, all of our soul potential. Okay, so let's see, what else do I have? Um, so yeah, we have um, chaotic times right now. Chaotic times precede change. And oh, I want to talk about, <laughs> I want to talk about Scorpio. So if you have a Scorpio sun, moon, or rising, these are the archetypal expressions of Scorpio. And, you know, this is me. <laughs> and I, I asked on the last video that I'm not showing, but I thought this would be a good way for you to practice. If you're learning astrology or trying, this is how we learn astrology. We study and then we look at someone's chart and we get a sense of the feel of them, right? So what do you feel about me when you watch my videos? What qualities? What do you notice? What do I talk about a lot? What comes through? What is shining through my soul, through my sun sign of Scorpio. So in general, and by the way, if you're a Scorpio, and did I say this already? Happy birthday. Happy birthday season. Happy soul return. Happy day you arrived on the planet. And this is our season 
to rise stronger. So I see you, I celebrate you. And if I miss something about you, Scorpio, write it in the comments, what you like, what you love about being a Scorpio and also what you don't like. This is actually part of the reason I got into astrology. People would say, oh, you're a Scorpio, thinking that I was a stinging Scorpio and I'm not. I have a lot of air, I'm sorry, a lot of fire. I've got moon and Leo, a lot of Sag and Aries, but Scorpio nonetheless. So here we go. Okay. So, um, Scorpios, let's see, I was talking about, oh, here we go. So in general, Scorpios are the, the healers, the therapists, um, connected to being the transformational warriors, the detectives, the human delight detectives, um, or detectors. We can, yeah, don't lie to a Scorpio. You will not get away with it. We know. We're the midwives of the soul. We're grief counselors. Um, Scorpios are powerfully perceptive. They don't miss anything. I always say, you know, the good news is I can see and feel everything. The bad news is I can see and feel everything. They're observant and mysterious. So th these are the qualities of Scorpio. And this is the energy we get to borrow for the new moon. If you're not a Scorpio, you have a house that is Scorpio. And you have Pluto somewhere and Mars. These are the two planets connected to uh, Scorpio. So we all have these different parts of ourselves that bring our wholeness. It's just what we lead with, right? So during Scorpio season, we may be noticing a call for um, this rebirthing process, purging, clearing, so that we can emerge more of our authentic selves, rise up with greater power and purpose. Um, it's a shedding time. It's a reclaiming shadow. And, um, you know, if you, I would say the things to do during this time for you to, to bring forward, what is yours to bring forward? Breath work, shadow work, um, really following the triggers of what, how people trigger you, trigger you to go down into the core, to the root to reclaim the hidden suppressed energy there for you, the potential, um, and to keep holding the question, where am I holding back? Where am I hiding my power, my gifts, my true nature? Where do you have a mask on that you need to take off, right? And be yourself. I had this feeling came to me earlier today because I'm blessed to have this in my relationship after a lot of hard inner work. And it was like this, um, what a beautiful feeling it is to be in a healthy relationship with someone that you can be your raw and real self with, who knows everything about you, the shadowy stuff, the stuff that you are ashamed of, and they love you completely. This is the work of the season. First, you, you embrace and love all of who you are, especially where you have shame or um, you're afraid to be seen or you feel wounded, you need to just wrap your arms around yourself and tell yourself, I love all of who I am, all parts of me, for all parts of me are purposeful for the unfolding and the emerging of my potential, okay? That's for you. Um, so really quick, I want to talk about just some of the relationships, the aspects, sun and moon in Scorpio, trine Saturn, Mercury in Scorpio, opposite Uranus in Taurus. We have a grand trine in Mercury in Scorpio, Mars in Cancer, Neptune in Pisces, watery. I know that I've been crying a lot more. Let yourself cry. Again, let yourself feel your grief. Grief isn't just the death of someone you love. It's the death of a life you thought you'd have. It's life not being as you hoped it would be. It's witnessing the chaos and feeling the grief of feeling powerless. Let yourself cry, clear your soul, cleanse your soul, and then say, now what? What's my vision? Where's my hope? What do I hold to be? What do I value? And you keep that alive inside of you. Whatever's happening on the external, as you build this inside of you, you are contributing to what's unfolding for all of us, to the collective, right? So th these are just possibilities of the transformational opportunities. 
Sun and Moon and Scorpio trying Saturn is to really take your potential serious. You may be feeling called to have more structure, more routine. Um, stand up. You know, I, I noticed I felt, I always feel the illumination cycle is a little, few weeks ahead. And I was feeling like I was hiding my truth about the election. I wasn't speaking my truth. And then I kind of said, I don't care what people think, what I feel. These are my values. This is what I believe. This is what I see is happening. And I can't, if I, if I didn't speak up, even if I lost followers on Instagram or wherever, I wouldn't respect myself. If I didn't speak up, if I didn't say to my family and loved ones, Hey, here's why I'm voting for this person. By the way, it's Kamala Harris. I'm going to say it loud and proud and strong because I think we're seeing the dying off um, Pluto in the last degree of Capricorn at 29 degrees. We have had Pluto and Capricorn since 2008 and what Pluto and Capricorn did was showing us all the structures and systems that don't work and the archaic way of being. And in my translation, that is the archaic patriarchic, patriarchal government ruled by a man. We're so conditioned. It, it breaks my heart to how many women are still conditioned to think that women can't be the president, that Kamala isn't prepared to be the president because she's a woman. This is deep unconscious programming. Okay. See how fired up I am. I, in giving myself and my myself voice and choice to speak my truth, I felt this power rising, this passion returning. The, I, you know, I, I, if you watch my videos, you know that I've talked about having chronic pain. The more I spoke up, the, my, the more my body was like, yeah, girl, go. It was like I was suppressing. Maybe if you have chronic pain, let me know. Are you suppressing your truth? Are you suppressing your voice? Are you suppressing your passion? Are you suppressing like what you know to be true, but you're holding back because you're in your old patterning of people pleasing and afraid of hurting anyone or afraid of being rejected? Let me tell you about, I'm getting fired up. Woo, Scorpio season. <laughs> let me tell you about fear of rejection, you're already rejecting yourself if you fear rejection. This light in the back is really bothering me, so I'm going to try to adjust my head so I can cover that. There we go. Um, if you are fearing rejection, you're already rejecting part of you. Scorpio New Moon says, no, no, no. Rise in your power. We also have some aspects of that. Um, I didn't look at the asteroids, but I know there's a lot of asteroids which are connected to the feminine, sacred feminine rising. They're active during this new moon. We have um, Venus and Sagittarius opposite Jupiter and Gemini. This is expanding your belief system. What do you believe? Why do you believe? Question why you, what you believe and why you believe. And, and are your values being supported by the candidate you're, you're choosing? What world do you want to live in? Venus in Sagittarius is like expand to higher possibilities that include all. Okay. Then we also have Venus in Sagittarius square, Saturn in Pisces, which is expand to higher vision and then come down to what do you need to do? What's the work involved? What's the work involved? And then we have, <laughs> I already mentioned, Mars in Cancer opposite Pluto and Capricorn. This, my friends, my soul friends, is where I'd like to say we're done with the heavy stuff. We're done with the hard work. We're done with the pushing and the rebirthing. Um, opposition from Mars and Pluto, the biggest birthing pains ever. It's whatever, it's like the pressure. It's the pressure of what's not working. And oppositions mean we have to integrate in ourselves and in the world. We need to find you know, how do we integrate both of those, those positions, right? We've seen a lot of division, very divided. And, and we're thinking, how is this all going to unfold? Well, this is where shadow work is important to kind of diffuse some of the pressure and the energy of where I'm judging others. Where's that in me? And um, letting it kind of, 
yeah, be integrated. So it's not coming from aggression, but rather assertiveness. And this is also this new moon in Scorpio is inviting us to that. So look at where we are in. We haven't learned how to be in healthy anger, healthy um, masculine, actually. We're seeing a lot of the toxic masculinity that is the dinosaur that needs to fade out. So we can rise, I think, with the feminine way, with collaboration, with compassion, with intuition, with, you know, gosh, I see not only, yeah, you know, here's the thing I want to say about politics, and then I'm going to stop. I understand why people are voting for certain people because collectively we know in our souls things the way they have been are not working and some big rebirthing has to happen. And yet we're still stuck in this same patterning of only two choices, the less of two evils, people say. I promise you, I feel so deeply that as we, Kamala matches the transformational requirement of something so different, so out of the box, out of the ordinary, break out of the system. And then from there, there will be a lot of restructuring. When Pluto goes into Aquarius permanently for 20 years, a lot of restructuring of the old ways to more innovative ways that serve humanity. So I understand why some people are drawn to people like Elon Musk. I'm sorry, he's not the champion you think he is. I'm just saying, this is from my intuition. Take it or leave it. Okay, so I wanna read a couple quotes and then I'm gonna wrap up. From, this is a, you know, what came to me when I thought of this new moon in Scorpio is the descent of Inanna. It's a an, um, Sumerian myth that speaks to, I feel like the work we're doing individually and collectively. And so this is from the author's name. I know, I don't know how to say it correctly, but I'm gonna try. Um, I'll put the website in the description so you can look at the where I got this quote. Uh, Sinjini Mihratra. I'm sure I didn't do it justice. It's a beautiful name. Um, but I found this quote and it speaks to this new moon perfectly. I found this quote after I kind of sat in meditation, wrote my notes. What does this feel like? This is what she wrote about the Jungian interpretation of this mythology. A stripping away of everything that was held dear. Now, please, I don't hope you hear this with fear, but here it is birthing hear it as a call for our souls to rise up higher to new possibilities, empowered, no longer disempowered. Okay. So stripping away of everything that was held dear, coming face to face with the shadows, reuniting, and then rising back together into the light. Like Anana, we constantly challenge ourselves, strive harder to learn, to know, to be, and to do more. This is not necessarily a good or bad thing, but a part of this doing and striving, this process of personal growth that we undertake over and over again. Anybody feel me on that? I know. Can be likened to a period of death, rebirth, and renewal. As old structures crumble, our psyche journeys down to the underworld coming face to face with old ideas, visions, and identity, right? Take the mask off that no longer serve us. No more hiding friends, more empowering so that we can create more empowering ones. And then we rise up like Inanna, aware of our vulnerabilities and the strength we can draw from them. Okay. Wow. I just feel like this, that just captures it. So let these words empower you to be your own warrior for transformation for your inner world so that you can be a warrior for transformation in our collective world. Surrender to the great mystery of unfolding and take action to be the midwife for your own potential and then step into the gap to be the midwife for those who are going through their transformational journeys. I'd love to support you on your transformational journey. That's what I'm all about. I love 
you know, I'm, a, I'm a grief counselor, I'm a transformational hypnotherapist, I'm a spiritual director. I've gathered a lot through my lived experience and through my trainings of knowing how to step in the darkness with people, to hold your hand as you navigate life no longer as it was towards life that is possible going forward for you individually and for our world that is unfolding, that is earthquaking every day, right? So I just want to say peace be with you. You're not alone. Let when you feel fear, ask fear what it wants to show you. Ask what where it's false evidence appearing real and then ask what do I need to tether into to navigate these transformational waves that are, are bringing us forward, rebirthing us to new potential, new possibilities. This is Scorpio. You know, us Scorpios are familiar with this. We go through many, many death and rebirths, you know, psychologically. And this is how we grow. This is how we evolve. And so all is well, my friends, truly. Uh, reach out for me if you want a 20-minute session with me, free. That's a consultation where we can look at your chart or I can take you through some of my soul work um, processes. Or know that you're worthy. And this, is, this time is about reclaiming our worth and our value and standing standing up for what we value, right? No longer tolerating the unacceptable in our relationships, in our politics, in our world, and in ourselves. No longer accepting the unacceptable or tolerating it. And getting real, taking the masks off, stepping forward and saying, you know, if nothing more, your purpose is, everyone's looking for their purpose. You know what your purpose is? To be who God created you to be to no longer hide, to use the voice God gave you to speak up for truth and possibilities, okay, for yourself and others. All right, that's all I have to say. I hope there was something here that really started the birthquakes happening for you, rippled through your core and to wake you up to say, there's so much more for me and for all of us. And, you know, I like to say, you know, that saying, when you know better, do better. It's not just that. It's when you know better, you do better, and you inform your subconscious mind, and you activate your soul potential, and you step forward strong. And in your power, in your potential, you are needed. You matter. Your voice matters. Your vote matters. All right. All my love to you. Thank you so much for spending some time with me. I know how precious your life is, how precious your time is. And I truly hope that something I said today really speaks to you, really calls you to be a warrior for your transformation and for your soul potential. All right, until next time, take good care.